Now that we know how genes are translated into proteins, we can look into how changes in the DNA, what we call mutations, a mutation is a change in the DNA, how changes in the DNA can then have effects in the protein. And um, So when we talk about the word mutation, we really mean a change in the DNA. So that is what, what it means in biology. Here we're going to look at, uh, and just to note it, it doesn't necessarily have to be bad or good. Mutations can be beneficial, mutations can be negative, mutations can be neutral. So let's look at, at the uh, types of mutations that we can have here. And we're just going to look at, at point mutations. These are changes in a single nucleotide base. And this can be one base gets deleted, one base is added, or one base is substituted for a different base. And in this case, in base substitution, where one base is substituted for another, we have three types of mutations. It can be silent mutation, when the amino acid that it, um, the same amino acid is, is, is coded for, missense when you change the amino acid that is coded for, and nonsense when instead of coding from an amino acid, now you code for a stop codon. So uh, we're going to look into this in more detail in the next slide. But the effect of these mutations, the effect that they have on the proteins, is dependent on how the genetic code is read. So remember back, the uh, amino acids are determined by a sequence of three nucleotides. So the genetic code is read, is read in groups of three nucleotides. And there are two important things of this. One is that there can be several triplets that code for the same amino acid. So if, for example, you change this, the sequence that originally had UCC and you change that for UCA, you're still coding for the same amino acid, so you're not really changing the protein. The other aspect, since it's read in groups of three, adding or removing a base can remove the frame of reading. So if this used to be an amino acid, uh, uh, this was the uh, original codon, and now you add another nucleotide at the beginning, now the codon will include that nucleotide, the U and the C, and now the G will be part of the next codon. So the, the genetic code is always read in groups of three. So changing the number of bases will change the code, the way the codons are read, which will change the meaning of the, of the amino acid that will be coded for. So since we said before, you, since there are multiple codons that can code for the same ami uh, amino acid, it is possible to have a mutation in which you're changing a base pair, but you're still coding for the same, for the same amino acid. So for example here, we have this pair that it was T and A, and this sequence here has a mutation where the T and the A have been replaced by a C and a G. This used to have the codon, once it gets transcribed into RNA, the codon used to be CCU. Now the codon is CCC, once it is transcribed into RNA. So this is DNA sequence, this one with the mutation, and this is the original DNA sequence. And here will be the transcript from that original sequence, and this is the RNA transcript from the mutated sequence. And you can see that even though the codon has changed, instead of CCU, now we have CCC, the amino acid is still the same. Either codon codes for the same amino acid proline, which means the protein hasn't changed. The protein is the same. So this is what we call a synonymous or silent mutation because we won't see it in the phenotype. The protein produced is the same, so there is no effect in the organism. On the other hand, you can have a mutation that does change the codon and changes the amino acid that it is coding for. Let's look at the example here. Well, a C and a G in the original DNA template now the mutation that changes that C and G for an A and a T. So this, this changes the uh, transcript. Instead of having 
a CGC as we had in the original RNA, messenger RNA. Now we have a CAC. So this is a different codon that codes for a different amino acid. Originally we were coded for the amino acid arginine. Now we're coding for the amino acid histidine. And this will be a different protein. So this is what we call a missense mutation because it has changed the meaning of the codon. And now we're coding for a different amino acid. However, how much of an impact does it have on the function of the protein really depends on how different these two amino acids are. So the new amino acid from the one that should have been there. And also, which part, of what location of the protein this is happening. If this is happening at a location that has uh, is important for the function of the protein, then this is going to be a very damaging mutation. But it could be in an area that is not that important for the function of the protein and the protein can still work. So it won't be that much of an impact. But for here, we're just looking at what is the impact in the type of amino acid coded? So missense is any mutation that changes the amino acid that that codon used to code for. So it changes the codon so that the new codon now codes for a different amino acid. And some diseases can be traced back to this nucleotide substitution. So for example, sickle cell anemia is a result of a missense substitution. In the original sequence, an adenine was replaced by a thymine. And this new codon, here we had originally GAG, now it's GTG. And this new codon codes for a completely different amino acid. Instead of glutamine, now we have valine. And the main issue is this used to be a polar amino acid, and now instead we've substituted it for a non-polar. So this changes the way the protein folds, and it changes the secondary structure, the tertiary structure, and then it also makes the protein sticky so that the quaternary structure is also changing. It, it, it is able to not just form the single the amino acid, uh, the original hemoglobin protein is a tetramer of four different peptide sequences together. Now the abnormal one has the sticky ends that those tetramers just bind to each other and form these really long chains, which are the ones that grow inside the cell and stretch out the cell, changing the shape of the of the red blood cell. And this shape of these cells, this is what we call sickle. That's what the name sickle cell comes from for this shape that is caused by these proteins that aggregate. Another type of mutation is a nonsense mutation. And now in this case what happens is the original sequence is replaced here. We replace a T and an A for an A and a T. And the codon that used to code for an amino acid now has become a stop codon. So this is going to cause the termination of translation earlier than was supposed to. So when you have a nonsense mutation, you produce proteins that are shorter than what they should be because the stop codon stops translation before it, the protein is finished. Now how bad this is depends on how much was left of the protein and how important that piece is for the functioning of the protein. So the, if this stop codon happens pretty early on, it can completely disable a protein. Now let's look at what happens if you insert or delete a base. So um, in this case, we are deleting this C from the sequence. So what this means is the original ACG codon that we used to have is now just AG, so that to complement the third base, it has to borrow from the next codon. And then the next codon is going to be shifted as well, and every codon after that will be shifted. So we go from having this ACG to removing the C, so now we just have AG, and you have to borrow the C from the following codon. And every single codon from there on will be altered. So all the amino acids from that point on will be different. So notice that all these amino acids are different from 
the original ones. And not only, so, so this will affect everything that is downstream from that mutation. But the amino acids before the frame shift, those will still be there, those will still be the same. On the other hand, if we delete three nucleotides at a time, so three nucleotides are deleted at the same time, that deletes the entire codon. So the effect of that mutation is that now we deleted that amino acid, but it doesn't change the amino acids afterwards. So here we start with this first codon followed by a second codon, and uh, this codon is deleted. So now we have the amino acid that was coded for the first codon, the one for the second intact, and we're missing the third one, and instead we jump right next to the, right into the fourth amino acid, the codon codes for the fourth amino acid. So the, the amino acids are very are, are the same after that mutation, but we're missing this amino acid that was its codon was deleted. Mutations that change the way in which the codons are read by either adding or subtracting bases are called frame shift mutations because they they change the triplets as they're being read. So if this originally was a triplet and then this was a triplet, removing the C now makes every triplet from there on be different and it would change all the amino acids from that mutation forward. But if we add or remove three nucleotides at the same time, we're just adding or removing complete codons. So it doesn't result in a frame shift it would just result, if you're deleting a codon, then you're removing an amino acid, that one amino acid will not be present. If you're adding a new triplet, so a new set of three base pairs, then you will be adding a new amino acid. And this is how some diseases are also caused by, and it's by triplets that get repeated many times in the genes. So this is how Huntington's is caused, for example, is by having this triplet being repeated over and over inside the gene so that we are adding amino acids that are coded by this triplet and you're adding more than the normal number in the protein. So a normal person will have about 20 repeats of this CAG co uh, codon which codes for glutamine and um, someone with Huntington's will have somewhere over 40 repeats of this same triplet. So if a normal person would have about 20 of those, I mean, a codons that will result in about 20 of those amino acids, the, someone with the mutation will have twice as many amino acids, which makes the protein twice as long. Here we see the effect. So once we have the DNA and that DNA is transcribed into RNA, when we translate it, now we have this polyglutamine that in a normal protein it exists, it is present, but in the Huntington version, this polyglutamine section is twice as long as the original, and that makes the protein be twice as long in that area, even though the amino acids afterwards are not changed. This section is much longer, and that makes the protein aggregate, and it starts binding to each other, and it falls around the neurons, causing neural death. So this is how we can relate the structure of the protein to the sequence of amino acid to the type of codons it has back to a mutation in the DNA.